Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Mean Green Game Day. I'm your host, Jake Levine. I'm joined by Mackenzie Freeman, Jasmine Grace, and Sean Smith. And we are here to talk about the UNT Mean Green and some March Madness mean basketball. Yeah. We're officially in the greatest month of the year, right, guys? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, nothing compares to March. No. And right. Not even Christmas. Not even well, Christmas. Not it's, even it's Christmas. Better. <laughs> uh, the Mean Green are in the NIT, and they are doing pretty well. They are 3-0 so far. They just knocked off a Big 12 team in Oklahoma State. They won that game 65-59 to in overtime over in Stillwater. That game was on ESPN as well. Mm -hmm. Guys, what were our initial thoughts on that game? Sean, we're, we're, all, the gas, we're all the gas <laughs> on the break, Sean? We had all of the gas on all of the breaks okay. in this game. It was, uh, it was incredible um, all the way through overtime. Yeah, uh, the, the atmosphere there was awesome. You know, um, you talk about like these Power 5 schools and like mm -hmm. the crowd is just so into it. Um, awesome atmosphere. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's really cool that we finally get a chance to play one of these, uh, you know, Power 5 schools that are always so afraid to schedule us in the preseason. Mm -hmm. um, and then show them why, because we beat them. Um, and it's a tough game for them, and it doesn't look good for their school, because uh, we're that good at basketball. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was such an exciting game, a very gritty game. Uh, as a fan, it's hard to watch, but like knowing these guys need those types of games, especially to get far mm -hmm. into the postseason, it was just very, I feel like, important. Um, the guys are very high percent. When they go to overtime, they win almost every time. Like even when the clock, you know, buzzes and they have to go into overtime, I feel just super confident that they're gonna go out there and get the win. So, um, great game, and excited to see them play in Vegas. Yeah, I, I thought it was a great game. It's. You know the farthest we've made it in the NIT so yeah. good things happening there but also just the way we played and started off the game was really good and I like what Sean was saying the atmosphere was just something like no other yeah the maniacs were there and they were oh, yeah. loud and proud Full right a few hundred of them that's probably. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> love it Connor Hibbert you're watching man you're doing a great job um so MVPs of the game uh we're gonna start with UNT I'm gonna give mine I'm gonna give mine to Mule Sissoko how about that? I mean, yeah. you know, choice. popular choice probably going to be TP because there's a big shot in overtime. But I'm giving it to Sissoko. He had 12 points, 15 rebounds, eight of them offensive end. I thought he filled in really good for Abu. Mm -hmm. um, Abu's been, you know, out, out of commission for the last two days. Last two games, sorry. Um, so I thought he's filled in really well in that starting spot. Mackenzie, who'd you have? I'm going to have to agree with you. Um, I thought Tyler Perry played great, but he wasn't the most effective shooter. He mm -hmm. did hit big shots uh, because he's a big shot player. But like you said, Sissoko filling the role while Abu was out, and he went uh, six of nine from field goal. Mm -hmm. And the amount of rebounds he got doesn't account for how many of the rebounds he could have had with the amount that he touched. Right. So I'm going to have to give it to Sissoko. Jazz. I'm going to give it to Tyler. Um, I feel like in these moments, especially in these big tournaments, you need leadership. And I feel like Tyler has displayed that every game before the season and just even now especially. I feel like he's just done a great job of showing that leadership, making those big shots. Um, he also had a really – he only had one assist the entire game, but it was that one big one to Kai where he was right. able to knock down that deep three. Mm -hmm. So I just felt like that was really important, and I just feel like his leadership just carries throughout every game and really wills us to a lot of these wins. Well, this, this, yeah, Tyler Perry is a great pick, obviously. We wouldn't win that game without him. Um, but we obviously wouldn't win the game without Mula Sissoko right, as well. Right. Yeah, OSU team, they're so big, they're so long, yeah. they're so athletic. Mm -hmm. um, they were, <laughs> they still killed us on the boards. But yeah. without Mula getting eight offensive rebounds, uh, 16 total for, 15 total for a career high, um, it, it, it wouldn't have won. Uh, it would have right. been scary to see right. how many boards they would have gotten. Um, so, yeah, that's... Uh, I mean, Mulai in there to step in for a boo is, is big, and it's going to be Huge. a big going forward. Right. Yeah, absolutely. That was a really uh, physical game, and oh, yeah. we, we knew it was going to be yeah, a good game. Right. We knew Mean Green were going to come out fighting. I thought Soko came out really well. Um, so for Oklahoma State, Jazz, I want to hear your MVP from the Cowboys. Uh, I thought it was Sisse. Uh, he yeah. was six for six. Uh, he was definitely giving Sissoko some problems, especially at the beginning. I was surprised he didn't get, you know, a few more shots uh, yeah. in yeah. the second half going to the end of the game. I was actually really surprised about that. 100% um, from the field, I mean, I would feed that guy the ball. But uh, yeah. for some reason, you know, obviously uh, a lot of it is about guards and, you know, they were trying to work through them. But I felt like he was my player of the game because of just the efficiency that he played with for them. Mm -hmm. I had the same one, actually. Um, the only reason I didn't pick Asbury is because uh, late there in the fourth quarter, not clutch of the free throw line. Bold, I yeah. mean, he's an 80-something percent free throw shooter. He was for the mean green, you know. Um, but he just kept missing the free throws. And right. in my head, I was thinking, I'm not picking this guy for MVP. Yeah. Uh, Sean, who'd you have? 
Um, yeah, Esbury did have a great game. He also had, I believe, six offensive rebounds. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I also went with Cisse. Uh, Musa Cisse, he's 7-1. Um, I had never seen him knock down those post-fadeaway shots until he made three of them that game. Right. Two of them was one nearly a high school three-pointer. Um, I didn't know he had that in his bag. But, yeah, when you have a player like that going 6-for-6 six six from the floor, I'm surprised they don't feed it to him more. Um, that maybe would have uh, would have been dangerous. Um, but, yeah, he played phenomenal. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'm also going to go with the same. And more so because of the energy he brought in the end of the game. Yeah. Um, it was a very chippy game. And he was, even though they lost, he was able to obviously send the team into overtime. And he just maintained his composure, made some pretty clutch uh, defensive plays. And so I'd have to give it to him as well. Yeah, absolutely. And so there's a lot of uh, things that changed this game. I mean, it was close throughout. went to overtime. We can pinpoint a few things. But Mackenzie, what do you think was the biggest impact on this game? I thought even though we weren't the most effective when we shot, the shots that we did hit were in clutch moments. Um, mm -hmm. We talked about them scoring those threes towards the end of the game. And so we made nine three-pointers. So I'm going to have to go with that. Yeah. Jess? For me, what changed the game um, was probably the lineups. I've, obviously, we've seen the last two games that Ruben has been starting. I think that has just been very effective for our team. Um, he's a two-way player. He's someone who can play make. He's someone who can defend, obviously, all defensive team. And I think um, Edie, obviously, is a great player, but we've, saw, we've seen his minutes decrease. And I think sometimes that's hard, probably, for a coach when you have relationships with your players mm -hmm. and you want to kind of stay consistent. But I think that was just a great move, and I think like, we've reaped the benefits of that um, in the last few games when that's happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's, he's still dealing with that uh, wrist or knee yeah. problem, yeah. so right. he's been limited. Um, I think the difference was keeping the gas on the brakes. Hey. I'm talking about having <laughs> 17 points def given up defensively at halftime. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's, that how you, that's how you put a team out of commission. You know, we play at our pace. Uh, we definitely came out, set the tone, played in mean, grease, mean green style of basketball. That's right. Right. Um, and that's, that's how you win those games, you know. You won it's the battle of wills, and we won that. Yeah. Absolutely. I think, I think really... The biggest factor that this game came down to is the shooting from Oklahoma State. Mm -hmm. We're talking 33% from the field, 18% right. on threes, 15 for 25 on free throws, especially late in that game. That's Watch 60%. Right. <laughs> I mean, Sean, I think you and I and intramurals could put up those kind of numbers. <laughs> <laughs> they needed, they needed three-point champion intramural Jake Levine out there. Yeah, that would have exactly. been for the Oklahoma State. Um, Prime Jake Levine. So, <laughs> that's right. You know, I think I think we could dominate the could Prime actually. Jake Levine carry OSU to an NIT championship? That's right. So look at looking ahead to uh, Tuesday the 28th. UNT is going to play versus Wisconsin again on ESPN at six o'clock in the NIT semifinals in Las Vegas. Um, my player to watch for the mean green is going to be Tyler Perry. You know, for a long time now, we've been thinking this could be his last game. We saw him at the uh, end of the UAB game in Frisco, mm -hmm. you know, on his knees, thinking it was his last game at the NIT and everything. That's who I'm going to be looking for for a big performance because he doesn't want this to end here. Right. Matt, who you got? I'm going to go with Aaron Scott. I've liked um, what he's done in the postseason, especially, you know, that UAB game where we – struggled in that first half he was a big component as to why we were even able to climb back in that and I think TP is obviously going to be the most heavily scouted player because of the numbers he's been putting up so I think Aaron Scott will really make a difference in the mm -hmm. next game I think Sissoko is going to have to continue everything that mm -hmm. he's doing and probably do even more I'm not saying necessarily on the stat sheet get more rebounds or points, but just continue to fight, continue to play hard. We're going to need him out there. Uh, being without Abu, it's going to be really important that he shows up ready to play and ready to just go hard because it's going to be another physical matchup. Mm -hmm. Right. It's a little out of left field, but uh, I'm going to go with Jaden Martinez. Um, I think obviously everything you guys said is, is true as well, but uh, you know this Wisconsin team, they like to play through the post a lot. Um, they run a lot of post action, so yeah. uh, Mula is going to have to play a lot of defense down there. Um, and if he gets in foul trouble, Jaden's our next biggest player on right. the roster, and he's going to have to step up and really, uh, really work down there on that end. So if he's able to do that, I think we'll be in great shape. Right. Absolutely. And as we know, this game would mean just a ton for the Mean Green. That would be 4-0 oh, yeah. yeah. in the NIT. You're going to the championship game. Maybe you get to play UAB for a fourth time this season. Yep. See Jelly Walker yet again. Um, but that will do it for the UNT Mean Green. When we come back, we're going to talk about some head coaching news within the Mean Green uh, hoops, so stay right with us. Live from UNT, it's Wheel of Culture. 
Well, welcome back to Wheel of Culture. Our contestant is so close to solving this puzzle. But first, it's time to give the wheel a spin. Wow, you landed on London, one of the many places where you and your fellow students can go on a chance to experience new culture. But only if you can solve this puzzle. I'd like to solve the puzzle. Study abroad. That's correct. You just want yourself a trip to study abroad in London, England, and you can too. Just go to studyabroad.unt.edu to see deadlines and apply for scholarships. Get ready to study abroad. Man, I have all these non-perishable food items and I don't know what to do with them. I don't have any food at all. Do you have too many non-perishable goods? Yeah. Have you run out of food and can't get any more? Yeah. Well, don't have a cow, head on down to the UNT Food Pantry. Located behind Crumley Hall and Diamond Eagle Student Resource Center, the Food Pantry is the place for UNT students to get all the food they need. You'll be utterly surprised by all the options they have there. From gluten-free to lactose intolerant, even vegan and vegetarian, they have it all. Go to studentaffairs.unt.edu slash foodpantry for more information. Move on down to the UNT Food Pantry. Can I see your voter registration, please? All right, you're good. No registration, no entry. All right. Let me see your voter registration card, please. I'm not registered to vote. No registration, no entry. Dude, my friends are already in there. No registration, no entry. What the? Join the club. Register to vote today. Welcome back, everyone, to Mean Green Game Day. Uh, so we've talked about the Mean Green, the NIT. Now we're going to talk about the men's and women's. We've had some head coaching news, a uh, little kind of stirring up stuff. And uh, we're going to talk about Grant McCaslin and his, uh, his time here at UNT. What do you guys think, uh, what's going to happen after the season is over? Mac, what you got for me? It's hard to tell. Um, we are switching conferences, so as a Mean Green fan myself, I would obviously prefer that he stay, get us, you know, get us some competition with the new conference we're joining because mm -hmm. you look at his coaching resume, his name's out there. A lot of schools are going to want a guy like him, but I think just the culture he's brought to UNT can help with recruiting and all that stuff. And we actually would have a good shot in the American conference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm torn. Uh, obviously, I want coach to stay. I uh, love what he's brought to the program, to the school just to the environment, um, mm -hmm. just such a likable guy, such a great coach and yeah. everything. Um, but I would think it's kind of like a Dan Quinn situation with the Cowboys. I mean, he's brought so much to the team. You would right. hate to see him go, but you'd love to see him stay. So mm -hmm. hopefully he does play Dan Quinn and, and sticks around, but I would wish him the absolute best, you know, obviously, if he were to choose to depart. Mm -hmm. Right. Sean, what you got? Yeah, it's, uh, it's tough because, like, think about the expression, like, if you love something, let it go. Um, he's, he's the ultimate competitor, you know, he loves, he lives for this. Um, he said that there's no place he'd rather be than to coach this team. Um, but I think he wants to do it at the highest level. Right. Um, and unfortunately, that's, that's not Conference USA, despite what he's built here. Um, NCAA selection committee has shown time and time again that they don't care about Conference USA. Yeah. We're going to get right. one, one bid, and it's going to be whoever wins conference. And we're going to talk about that later. We can talk about that. We can go Stay there. Stay tuned. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the, guy's, the guy, uh, his family is here. His kids are in school. Right. Um, his license plate is GMG UNT. Go Mean um, Green. Go Mean Green. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so, yeah, he, he's, uh, he loves his program. He embodies everything that it is in terms of For toughness. Sure. Right. Um, so it's hard to see him going somewhere else. Um, Texas Tech is an appealing mm -hmm. team right Power now. Power five. It, yeah. Um, bigger school still in Texas, not too far down, uh, down the road. So mm -hmm. um, we'll have to see. I think his focus right now is winning the NIT tournament. For sure. Right. We definitely have him for that. Definitely. And so obviously the one school that we've kept on hearing about is Texas Tech Red right. Raiders since they just had their coach leave because of some other reasons some controversial yeah. things <laughs> um, so is there really let's say hypothetically he does move on is there any other school you could see him go into other than texas tech i think texas tech has their sights on them mm -hmm. so i do think there's other schools out there that would want him to just because of how good of a coach he is mm -hmm. um but i think if he doesn't end up going to texas tech i think he'll stay with unt going into next year mm -hmm. 
Yes, I also think that Texas Tech is the main school that would probably pursue him and get the opportunity to have him. Um, other schools obviously are going to be looking at him. I think people are looking at him every single year, but um, I think that you know any team that wants a great defense, obviously with our number one defense, I think would want him. But right. um, I think that's the main school I kind of see that ha actually has a chance of getting him. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, we've seen the Tech rumors because they have an opening. Um, Texas also, maybe. Right. We saw rumors with them before uh, before they hired Chris Beard. Uh, Kaslin was one of their candidates. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I'm thinking hopefully he stays with UNT. Um, you know, any coach, any school in the country would be lucky to have a coach like that. I do think with the sure. Texas situation, I think they're going to end up going with Rodney Terry yeah. just because that seems, that he seems filled similar. in that role. He knows yeah. the team, knows the environment. And now they're, Why not just yeah, stick with them? The yeah, they're exactly. They're the best, having the best success they've had in years. Right, exactly. Uh, so so right. I would, for Texas, I would stick with Rodney Terry. And so I want to go back to football season. We saw... Uh, Ren Baker leave as AD, right? Mm -hmm. And then we had Jared Mosley promoted from within to AD. Right. So let's say hypothetically, Grant McCaslin leaves. Do you think UNT promotes within to head coach, or do you think they try to find an external head coach? Sean, what do you think? Well, the number one internal candidate would obviously be Ross Hodge. Um, mm -hmm. He's the associate head coach right now. Um, and he's a, he's a phenomenal coach as well. He won, uh, he won the National Associate Coach of the Year um, in 2020. Um, Basically, the mastermind behind uh, UNC is no middle defense. Right. Um, so I think he could easily step in and become a very successful head coach. Um, that being said, the, the industry is about relationships, and I can see them wanting to stay together and continue to, to build their own program together as, right. they have, um, as they have here. I'd have to agree with Sean. I think UNT has a lot of pride in either alumni or coaches that have been around the program for a long time. Um, you know, you look at Jaylee Mitchell. She was an alumni that played here. She became head coach. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll see something similar with the men's basketball team. Mm -hmm. Jazz, what do you think? Yeah, I agree. I think that, like everyone keeps saying, like we're a school that looks within. We're a school that wants to – we take pride in our own and we want to give them opportunities and chances. So I love that about us, and I would be more than happy uh, if Ross – was the coach next year. Right. Absolutely. And so on the women's basketball side of things, UNT did part ways with head coach Jaylee Mitchell. Um, so we have this question. Do we think this was overdue, perfectly timed, or too soon? Uh, I'm going to start with mine. I think it was maybe a little too soon, to be honest. Um, the UNT women's team showed a lot of promise there at the end of the season. Mm -hmm. They lost a very close game in the conference tournament um, that they should have won. Um, I think it's a little too soon, but with that said, I'm excited for a new coach and what that has to offer. But, Mac, what do you think? Uh, I'm honestly going to be in the middle here. I think it was the perfect timing. If you look at what Jaylee Mitchell has done for the team, besides looking at her record, which at the end of the day, you know, that's what matters to, you know, the people that are hiring and firing and all that jazz. But she got our first win over a ranked opponent her first year coaching here. Um, and she, she brought a lot of first for this program. Mm -hmm. And so I just think it's perfect time. You're going into a new conference, maybe just – Get a fresh start. And so I think it was perfect timing. Yeah, kind of an overhaul of the program. Yeah. Yeah, Jazz, what do you think? I also think it was perfect timing. I thought the trajectory that she brought um, on the program, I thought it was great. I mean, we were going up, up, and up, and I think it kind of just reached a plateau yeah. uh, in the last couple years. And, you know, obviously teams like UNT who are just trying to get better and bigger every year, we want to win. We want to win now. Mm -hmm. So whatever that takes, you know, kind of just with um, football, with, uh, mm -hmm. with with our coach, um, with Latrell, I think that, mm -hmm. you know, he was doing better than we were doing, you know, we were right. doing better than we were doing, but again, it kind of just reached a plateau of kind of like a mid-season, so I think that it was kind of like the perfect timing. Yeah, I, I, I agree with all that. Um, yeah, I think it was definitely the right time moving into this new conference. We have bigger and better expectations. Right. Um, and yeah, I think we had hit our ceiling with, with uh, mm -hmm. under Mitchell. So I think it's a good opportunity for this program to grow. Also moving out of the Quincy Noble era as well yep. right. when she graduates. Um, so yeah, it's an exciting time. We have a lot of young players on the roster who can be molded into a great team. So we can, yep. uh, we can see where this goes. Fun time for women's UNT basketball. Yeah, absolutely. And I again want to relate this one to the football team as well, mm -hmm. right? So we saw Seth Luttrell fired and then they kind of took a, a long shot when got Eric Morris, right? Oh, yeah. right? And now we've seen the football recruiting skyrocket, a lot of mm -hmm. hype around this team now, right? right? Right. So I think, do you guys think the recruiting could get better if they kind of go for that same sort of situation, if they 
go outside to get a new coach instead of promoting within in this instance. You know, different from a grant leaving versus right. a firing. You know, there's kind of a difference there. Mackenzie, what right. do you think? Um, so Mark Kellogg from SFA, he looks promising for mm -hmm. this team. He is coming off of a 25-8 and eight season, and he got SFA to March Madness as a 12 seed. Um, I'd be really interested to see him come here. And so I'd have to say for the women's program, I think going externally um, would actually be better just with us switching conferences and all that stuff. And they also beat us earlier this year. Yeah, they, they also, no, us. they destroyed us. Yeah. They didn't just they beat us. us. <laughs> in the Super Bowl. Uh, yeah, yeah I just think he can bring offense and defense. They had, they were second in steals last season. Mm -hmm. And so if he can bring that here, the DFW area is a heavily recruited area. Yeah. I think... You know, our mean green can be a mean green team. <laughs> <laughs> Chaz, what do you think? Yes, I also think that we should search mostly uh, externally. Um, I'm not 100% familiar with everyone we have on staff and everything, but I am. Uh, I do know that like we need change. We need change around this program. Uh, we want to see things grow, and I think looking externally would be the way to really do that. Mm -hmm. Sean, I'm gonna I'm gonna disagree. I think uh, I think we have some good in-house candidates. Um, okay. Alex Fur, the current associate head coach. Um, she's, uh, she's been a rising star in the, in the women's coaching community. Uh, she came through the JUCO route, similar to Coach Mack. Um, got out the mud and bodies the mean green toughness. Um, she was McDonald's All-American in high school. And she went 50 and, 24, uh, 50 and 29 over her last three years at Panola College in JUCO, including 21 and 8 last season. Mm -hmm. um, and she just got here last year, so in a way it is a new direction for this program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think I could, I think she's a great candidate. Okay. Yeah, I like that. So when we come back, we're gonna talk about some of the best upsets we've seen in March Madness so far. Plenty to choose from, so stay right with us. Yeah, I really like this. Yeah, so we have to watch the next one before next class, right? We do? I think so, but it's not on Netflix and it's not on Hulu, so. Man, I don't wanna pay for that. So what do we do? You think there's a place we could go to get the movie? Um, I'm not sure, maybe. Oh, there's a place to get the movie. Oh, really? Yeah, it's right here on campus. Come on, I'll show you. Welcome back to Mean Green Game Day. I'm your host, Jake Levine. I'm joined by Mackenzie Freeman, Jasmine Grace, and Sean Smith. Same Pleasure. crew as 20 minutes ago. Uh, and we're going to talk about some of these upsets we've seen in March Madness. Uh, guys, what a year so yeah. far. Yeah. <laughs> what a month of March. I mean, we've seen Madness. Princeton, be Arizona, FAU's going crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the women's side, Indiana lost. We saw yeah. two one seeds lose. So... Mackenzie, what do you have for some fun facts for me? Some fun facts. Um, this is the fourth time in NCAA history where the Blue Bloods, which includes Duke, Kentucky, Kansas, and UNC, haven't been in the playoffs. Um, another fun fact is Miami is the only AAC team left, and they've been in the Sweet 16 since 1979. 
Um, those are just a few I have, obviously. Princeton and, or Princeton's men and women's program are the only two Ivy League schools to advance to the Sweet 16. Really? Ever? Yeah. All right. Oh. And then it's only Princeton and St. Peter's to ever make the, uh, what it would be to make the right. Elite Eight if they win. Right, exactly. They beat Creighton at 8 o'clock tonight. And FAU's, make, er, yeah, FAU's making history for their program, too. Absolutely. Yep. So we're going to talk about our favorite upset from the men's and women's side. I'm going to go first. I'm going to go with the FAU Owls over Tennessee. I know it's nice. not, in terms of the numbers, it's not that big an upset, but we got a Conference USA team in the Elite Eight. It's yes, almost sir. like It's almost we can like compete. we should have more bids than <laughs> yeah. one. But, you know. That'd be crazy. That'd be crazy. We're out of this conference anyways. Um, <laughs> that's, that's, that's so fair. Um, so so FAU, I mean, by the numbers, they did not play that great. I mean, they shot 21 of 50 from the field, yeah. 8 for 27 from beyond the right. arc. That's you know, hard. on paper, not looking that good. I mean, they had twice as many turnovers as Tennessee. Right. Tennessee only had six turnovers, but they still came away with a win. They're heading to the lead eight. Guys, I think this team, this team could win it all. This team can win that's it all. A, that's a I think the FAU Alice can win that you championship. Can win all? The, you you can, agree with me, Sean? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm with Absolutely. you. I think this, the field is so open right now. I mean, I still have Houston. Yeah. Um, Bama's still in it. Yeah. But they're one of the best teams left. Yeah. I mean, they're yeah. Top, I mean top, really. They're at least top eight. The best are ranked 10th going into the tournament in net. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't, I don't see this and as a problem. And somehow got a nine seed. Yeah. yeah right. After winning the conference, after, so saying, after the going seeding, undefeated in conference, after, seeding, like, after beating some power five to do schools, to get a legit seed in the right. tournament. That's right. They don't take a seed. I mean, you look at their strength of schedule. I would say that it was harder than Houston's. You they know, they're beating they beat, they beat yeah. Florida. They beat Florida. Absolutely. Yeah. They went neck and neck with Army. Like yeah. they played some tough schools. They're mm -hmm. a tough team. Yeah. Uh, Sean, what was your favorite upset from the men's side? My favorite upset, um, got to go with the greatest upset um, by the numbers in March Madness history. Uh, Fairleigh yeah. Dickinson University Absolutely. versus Purdue. This is, this is, this is what March is about, y'all. Yeah. This, is, this is why we watch the game. They were 23 and a half point underdogs. The tallest player on Fairleigh Dickinson is six foot seven, and he doesn't even play. Yeah. Right? They're going up against Zach Eady, who's seven, who has an entire foot on these guys. Um, shut him down. Uh, this program won four games last year yeah. and are now, uh, you know, household names. Uh, right. The amount of publicity that that brings for these players and this program um, and this school um, is awesome. And that's, that's, that's why we watch it. Um, you know, <laughs> they weren't even technically supposed to be here because they yeah. lost to right. Mary Mac yeah. in, their, in, the, in their finals, who is still transitioning to D1, which I don't fully understand. That yeah. was the same well, there's thing like an eligibility rule, year. like yeah. if you switch D2 to D1. Same thing with D1. Bellamy and Jacksonville State last year. Actually. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, and uh, I, I hope you all saw Tobin Anderson saying uh, yeah. before the game, yeah. the more I watch Purdue, the more I think we can beat them, which is just awesome. He just manifested um, the win. Yeah. Yeah. That guy yeah. rules. Yeah. Yeah. Good for him. He's got Iona now. Yeah, um, yeah. five yeah. years yeah. at Iona. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Jazz, what was yours? I have to pick the same game. I yeah. mean, just watching it live, you're sitting there like, they're not going to do it, are they? Like, they're, they're not, like, you know, <laughs> yeah. who's going to get yeah. it together? Like, yeah. you know, the whole time yeah. you're watching it, and then as the time dwindles down, you're like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What game? So, I think just that's the definition of a Cinderella story. That's the definition of March Madness right there. Only the second time, I think, you know, right. the 16th seed has beat a number one seed. Um if there was going to be any number one seed that was going to lose, I would have guessed it would have been Purdue. Yeah. So I guess that wasn't as surprising. But for it to be Farley Dickinson, that was very surprising. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm going to go with Princeton, and I'm going to go with both of their games in the postseason. Nice. Um, Two for. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same Real team. <laughs> Two for. Uh, might be they, a three for tonight. Oh. Might be. Oh. Might be. Oh. Point, you know, they come in. Point underdog seems like a lot to me. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, that's a stretch for sure. They come in. They beat Arizona. It's like, oh, okay. But they only beat Arizona by four. But then they come in and smack Missouri, an SEC school. Yeah. And it's their first time to beat an SEC school since 1942. So just wow. to come in Bro. and beat up on a team like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, 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 that's almost 100 two. years. <laughs> I was gonna, hey, I was going to make a joke about it. <laughs> The oh athletes, they just went crazy. It's almost, like, like, it's it, almost like the SEC isn't as good as the committee thinks they are. And mm, that I Missouri know, shouldn't crazy. be getting a seventh seed in the first place. Yeah. It's all the money, out. right? <laughs> you are so round up about CUSA. <laughs> it's not even funny. <laughs> oh, no. We are going to talk about okay. it. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, and so, women's side had a lot of upsets too, right? right? Yeah. 
Uh, Sean, what was your favorite upset from the women's bracket? Well, let's go with some action. Uh, Toledo <laughs> women's basketball over Iowa State. And uh, Ashley Jones, what I've talked about on the show. Mm-hmm. You know, there was a 12-5 matchup, which um, was an interesting matchup because we've seen on the men's side, um, I don't know about the numbers this year, but going back to past 10 years, uh, this is a 21-19 and matchup with mm-hmm. 19 wins for the 12 seed. So it's interesting to see that happening on the, on the women's side of the bracket as well. Yeah. Yeah, I would have to go with Miami uh, versus Indiana. Uh, Miami upsetting them. That was just such a great game to me. Uh, I thought that there were so many factors that went into that game and going before the game. I picked Miami to win. You know, y'all know I've been riding the Miami train for a minute now. <laughs> Tone down your bracket. And it's out. <laughs> My women's bracket is 97% correct. Wow. I have picked the best picks other than a few, obviously. But <laughs> um, yeah, I know ball. So it's just been really, <laughs> it's been really like. You know, just great to see it pay off. Uh, but, yeah, the Miami women's, they're playing great basketball, obviously. Just just snuck out the win today. Right. Um, yes, right before we went on there. Oh, yes, yeah, right before. We were all sitting here watching it. So, <laughs> I think that's that's my team. I'm going to ride with them to the end. So, that was my upset. My upset on the women's side, I'm going to go with Ole Miss versus Stanford. Um, getting a win over the number one seed in mm-hmm. the first two rounds is always something that's exciting. And I think Ole Miss was the right team to do it. Um, their coach was really humble about it, and she said, you know, she wasn't the first pick for Ole Miss's head coach, um, but she was the right pick, is what she said. Um, and it was the, in 1998 was the last time that two number one seeds didn't make it past the Sweet 16. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. Fun facts. Well, for my pick, the, I the, am going to go with Miami over Indiana, just like Jazz. Um, Miami took 14 less shots. They, yes. But they shot 57% from three. They did. And That's crazy. The main reason I chose this was because how they won this game on the last second shot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a crazy shot. You know, could have been a travel, but nah. <laughs> cool shot. Um, Ref didn't see it. doesn't count. And yes. they dominated this game. They had nine more defensive rebounds. And this was Indiana's first loss at home wow. yeah. this wow. year. And Miami is under 500 on the road this year. Yeah, that's crazy. I think that makes this even more crazy. It's all about getting hot, you know, at the right time. And I think Miami women's are doing that. They really are because they just won again. Yes. And Villanova Villanova has a leading (laughs) scorer in the nation. Exactly. So I ask myself this question every year in my own head when I pick, you know, maybe Virginia in 2018 (laughs) and maybe Purdue in 2023 to win the whole thing (laughs) and therefore lose out on hundreds of dollars. Um... Why do these one seeds keep losing? We're seeing it in men's and women's side now. Mac, why do these one seeds keep losing in March Madness? I'm gonna, I'm gonna join Sean on this. Like lower conferences need more love. Okay. Um, you know, these lower conference teams <laughs> that come good, into this, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> that come into this, um, they get placed at like a 16 seed yeah. or a 15 seed, and there's so much more pride in that program. And so they come in and they ball out, and that's just how these number one seeds lose. I love it, Jazz. Why? Why these one seeds keep losing? Yeah, kind of piggybacking, but the the gap between the mid majors and the high majors it's decreasing every single year, yeah. especially mm-hmm. in the men's. Especially in the men's, we're right. seeing it a little bit more in the women's, but especially in the men's, it's just decreasing, and it's giving everyone an opportunity. You know, there's talent, you know, with everyone, with every conference. So right. if those players and those teams with the great coaches that are also being hired in the mid majors can ball out, then anyone has a chance. Yeah. Well, like we were just talking about before the show started, when you win these NCAA tournament games, that brings more money back to your program, right. which yeah. uh, helps you develop your program even further. So it's a, it's a feedback loop of mm-hmm. selecting these same teams every year, um, and then they get more money, better recruits, and uh, yeah, conferences like Conference USA just fall out of the picture, and right. yeah. it sucks. It does. So when we come back, we are going to preview the rest of March Madness on the men's bracket, so stay with us. Has the weight of stress and anxiety ever felt too heavy to overcome? Wish there was a safe place to confide in? Wish granted. At UNT, we offer counseling and testing services to students located on the third floor of Chestnut Hall. UNT, we're here for you.
Welcome back to Me and Green Game Day. We're going to talk about the rest of March Madness, mainly about the Sweet 16 uh, for the men's side that started last night and it's going to continue tonight. So last night, the first game, Michigan State and Kansas State. Guys, Kansas State, this team. They're dangerous. Scary. They're scary. That alley-oop <laughs> yeah. alley was crazy. Absolutely nuts. Yeah. Um, confidence to pull that one off is yeah. out, Mac, off the charts. Tell me why Kansas State won this game. Um, Marquise Noel, he beat the NCAA assist record in that tournament with 19 assists. And to top it off, he had 20 points. So I just think he went crazy that game. Obviously, Keontae Johnson had a heck yeah. of a game as well. Oh, yeah. um, so I think that's why Kansas State won that. Mm -hmm. Yes, Marquise Noel, uh, just a true point guard, someone who controls the game, you know, positionless basketball. It was, it's very refreshing to watch him and just see someone, like I said, control the game. Uh, he also had five steals on top of that, right. you know, mm -hmm. so and, and, get, and he got that uh, game ceiling steal, you know, with the layup and everything. So mm -hmm. I thought this, that was just a fun game to watch, and I think that'll go down in history. I think we'll be talking about that one yeah. for yeah. a long time. Yeah. yeah. And it's uh, over Michigan State, too. We've, like... It's, it's been a meme for so long about how good Michigan State is in March. Every year they kind of like struggle to the finish line and then somehow end up in the Elite Eight. Yeah. Right. Um, so for Kansas State, a team that's not traditionally one of these powerhouses right. like Tom Izzo at Michigan State, um, Jerome Tang in his first yeah. year as a head coach over there, um, that's awesome. Um, yeah, they, they, they bring the passion and energy, which I feel like Tom Izzo has been lacking the few years. So right. we're really in a changing of the guards era in college basketball right now. Yeah. It's, it's right. really fun to watch. For Kansas State, for me, I mean, this team is able to put up 68 shots. Why? They only have five turnovers. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and they also had 10 steals on the defensive end. Uh, no, and they, it was half of those. Yeah. yeah. Just <laughs> they, they shot 56% from yeah. the field. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, it'll be a dogfight between them and FAU to win the national championship in March. For sure. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So they next game. They face each other next round, by the way. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. Uh, that's the real national champion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My national champion is, is who comes out of that game. It's the USA. So uh, USA. The, the next one, you kind of beat up Arkansas oh, by a yeah. ton. That was I mean, there sad. wasn't much to this one. Arkansas shot 32%, uh, while UConn shot 57%. I mean, you guys have any... Other thoughts about this? Uh, side? Arkansas uh, was just out rebounded as well, forty-three to thirty-one. Yeah. And then, yeah, you just talked about their shots. They just weren't able to hit anything, and UConn just came in and were they were effective. They shot fifty-seven percent from the floor. Mm -hmm. So I just think they were ready for that game. Yeah, I know it's March and there can be a lot of upsets, but going into this one, I was pretty confident that UConn was going to win. Yeah. Um, I felt like Arkansas getting as far as they did was, wasn't on my bracket. Um, right. So I definitely, you know, going to the game, that was probably out of the, out of all the games that played, I definitely felt the most confident about UConn winning. And right. they did. Yeah, I mean, credit Arkansas, they got farther than I thought they would as well. Yeah. They had such an up and down season. But uh, the talent on their roster is, is so great. Anthony Black, um, I think he really proved himself um, even in – 40-point blowout of right. uh, yeah. his NBA potential. Um, yeah, I and mean, we saw, like, how emotional they were after their last win. Right, and, right. And we kind of saw, you know, it's hard to keep that up after, um, that intensity up after that, like, release of getting that win like right. that. So right. um, I think we saw some of that, some of that there. Yeah, and uh, – it was crazy how dominant they were. I mean, and yeah. Arkansas yeah. kind of put themselves in the hole. They only had seven yeah. assists in the whole right. game. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so, next game, FAU, Tennessee. Mackenzie, I hear you're a huge volunteer fan. Yeah. Right? Uh, oh. Yeah. Gosh, what did you think about this one? She <laughs> said, gosh. FAU came back. Was they it, were was down. Was it surprising to see them win? Uh, yes. I will say it was surprising to see them win. I will say they're a very good team um, after – you know, you see them compete in CUSA. You hear what the analysts say. You're like, okay, this is a good team, but are they a great team? And I think last night proved that, hey, this FAU team is here to fight. Um, John L. Davis, he had 15 yeah. points, six rebounds, um, and they shut down Vescovy to only nine points, and this is the main guy for Tennessee. So they just weren't able to generate offense. Mm -hmm. 
Jazz, what did you think about FAU? Yeah, I thought it was a great game. I think, you know, throughout the season, we're playing them. I'm watching them, and I'm wondering, like, are they a March Madness team? Because yeah. you see them beating Conference USA. Obviously, we're a mid-major with lots of talent, but still a mm -hmm. mid-major. So I was wondering how it was going to translate, and it's translated very well. Um, I can see them going really far. And right. as a CUSA fan, I'm rooting for them. So. Yeah. yeah. It's almost like the, the numbers and Kempom and the metrics are correct when they have them as a top 10 team it in the country. Crazy. Yeah. And us as a top 30 team in the country, mm -hmm. um, and for some reason, I don't think we can win an NCAA March Madness game, but um, yeah, this <laughs> FAU team is legit. Um, they got scores all throughout the roster. You know, that's, that's the thing that always impressed me most is like, they have guys, you know, the eighth, ninth man off the bench coming in and hitting two threes on you. You know, right. for, that's so demoralizing for yeah. a team when like, you know, your starters come out and did well, you know, built up a lead like they right. did, and then you have a guy like, John Carlo Rosado or Michael Forge coming <laughs> off the bench and yeah. you know hitting a backbreaker on you. Um, they're yeah. so well balanced and yeah, they're they're legit. Yeah, they are. And uh, the last game last night was an instant classic. We saw oh, yeah. the rematch Lee of the game. Alex Morrison meme game. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Gonzaga, <laughs> UCLA. Callback. Guys, this game was just incredible right yeah uh, Alex, uh, Gonzaga uh, came out on top with a play that looked exactly like Chris Jenkins game winner for mm -hmm. Villanova mm -hmm. that definitely didn't get that off Instagram uh <laughs> Sean Sean what do you think about uh, Gonzaga uh, well, Adam Morrison was actually at that game as well uh, that was sorry Adam. um I guess I need I owe Drew Timmy an apology um yeah. apparently I was I hating on him do. before <laughs> um I love his game uh, and he had he was on full display last night um, just absolutely cooking dudes yeah. in the post um, yeah a few finishes that should have been and ones um, he's so good he's so skillful um, I won't I won't go into his NBA perspective today but yeah I love that guy yeah, yeah. Yeah, he had 19 points at the half. I mean, any guy in March Madness or any college game where sometimes the score only gets up to 50, 60, right. and, a guy, and a guy individually has 19 at the half, you know, that's a guy you need to watch out for. And he right. just came out the second half still going. Mm -hmm. So I think he just played really well. Obviously, Gonzaga played really well. UCLA went on that run at the end. I thought maybe they had a chance, but obviously the three uh, capped it off. And yeah. Right. Um, in a three versus two game, you look at halftime and a team's down by 13. You, you know it's still March Madness season, so you're like, eh, they could come back. But, like, Gonzaga's climb to finish the game was just incredible. They oh, yeah. finished with 19 bench points. UCLA only had four. So Gonzaga was able to not only play through Drew Timmy, but they were able to utilize their whole roster, yeah, which I thought was a good thing about that team. Yeah, having Strother be the one to finish it off. Right, um, yeah. Uh, on, that, on that Villanova play, which, uh, which Mark you did, did give credit for. Uh, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Maybe, maybe stole some ideas from. Yeah. Hey, whatever yeah. works, works. Exactly. You know what impressed me most about this Gonzaga team? They out-rebounded yep. UCLA 50-26. to 26. Yeah. yeah. Although it was wow. a close game, I feel like that is the biggest difference to me. I mean, rebounding is just so key. Especially if it leads yeah. to second-chance points. Yeah. Uh, I didn't write that stat down, but... You know, getting 50 rebounds. 50 <laughs> like, against 20. Yes. You deserve to win the game. Yeah, if you get exactly. 50 rebounds. <laughs> that is crazy. Um, so we're going to look at today's upcoming games. We've got one about to start. San Diego mm -hmm. State and Alabama. Um, I want to get your guys' picks for all these games. How about that? We'll just go across, get some picks for who's going to win this game. Uh, I'm going to take Alabama just because this yeah. team is hot. Um, they average 82 points a game. Um, I think they're just going to overpower them. Honestly, I thought San Diego State could have lost to Furman, but they blew them out. But yeah. I, I think Alabama's going to win this game. Mackenzie? Yeah, uh, I agree. I think if you look in terms of quad one wins, Alabama's, you know, one of the best teams. Um, and just San Diego State, they beat a 12 seed and they beat a 13 seed. So it'll be interesting to see them go up against a one seed. But mm -hmm. I really do think Alabama's going to take this one. Mm-hmm. Yes, I feel the same way. In terms of the tournament, San Diego State hasn't faced some of the more tougher teams. They probably had one of, if not one of the easiest schedules to this point. So right. I think that uh, Alabama is going to come out with a win as long as they come out, you know, not underestimating their opponent, but really just putting the, what would you say, all, putting all gas on the brakes. And <laughs> all of the gas on the brakes. Yeah, all, all of it and just, and just, you know, doing what they do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I think Alabama is the best team in the country with the best player in the country. Um, I think they're going to win this. Um, I think we're going to see them in the national championship. Um, 
and uh, San Diego State, the last remaining Mountain West Conference team um, that we saw four of in this tournament. <laughs> you disgusted. Four of them. I'm disgusted. I'm disgusted. Um, no, no, no UAB, no UNT in this tournament. Yeah. Even though yeah. We're we, we, we were 2-0 and oh against the Mountain West this right. with uh, San Jose State. Um, it's... Uh, I'm baffled. I'm baffled. Yeah, I'm baffled. yeah. I'm baffled. Me too. Especially looking at UAB now, just yeah. they're dangerous. Yeah. They would have caused some trouble. I don't want to play in them in the championship game. That's oh. for sure. Yeah. Um, so next game is Alabama. I'm sorry. It's uh, Miami Hurricanes and Houston Cougars. I think Houston might be on upset watch here. Oof. I don't yes. think Miami. <laughs> I'll, okay, I think Houston's going to win the game, but I think this is upset watch. Mm. Mackenzie, I, I'm honestly going to have to agree with you. Um, Miami beat Duke. They have Isaiah Wong, who had 27 points in the last game. And I think if they keep up that momentum, they're definitely on upset alert. Mm -hmm. They are definitely on upset alert. Um, <laughs> Miami, I've been riding them. I've been riding them for like weeks now. I've been, you know what I'm saying? Like they are, they are playing really great basketball. Um, they've been the best team out of the ACC. They haven't been the best team in years out of that conference. So. I'm just going to keep going with them, and yes, they're doing great. Yeah, it wouldn't be the first time we've seen Houston on upset watch uh, yeah. in this postseason. All right, for sure. Um, they've, had, they've, been, they've been a little shaky here. I still have them as my national champions. Um, I'm sticking with that. I know this Miami team is very good. Um, I know you've been riding them for a while, Jazz, but uh, it's Houston team. Their defense travels. They're so good. Um, yeah. And they have, they have more scoring than they've had in recent years, so I think we're not going to see one of those scoring jouts hit that is – Plagued them the past few uh, four yeah. seasons. Okay. Right. And real quick, if we only have time for one of these two remaining games, it's going to be Princeton and Creighton. We're talking about this single oh, yeah. game real quick. Um, I think Princeton's going to win this game. I mean, they've been yeah. really solid. Like, do you guys think Creighton can win this, Sean? Um, I, I, got, I got to ride the Tigers. I mean, the Princeton team, they're, they're, they're just so much fun to watch. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't want to root against them. I'm going with Princeton. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go with Princeton, too. I'm going to go with Princeton, for sure. Absolutely. I would love to see him. It's almost like you want to see it. Oh, yeah. Another, uh, another St. Peter's Elite Eight run. You know, right. 15 seed. That's, Why not? Uh, two years in a row. Right. Why cool. not? And then real quick, Xavier and Texas. You guys think the Longhorns can pull it off? This one's tough. Um, I am going to go with Texas, though, for this one. Yeah? I got Texas. I'm going to go with Xavier. I think they have the best, sure. one of the best offensive scoring teams in the nation. And so, uh, yeah, I think they'll continue riding that wave. For sure. And that will do it for this one. When we come back, we're going to talk about the women's side, previewing the upcoming Sweet 16. So stay with us. It's that time of year where everyone plays a dangerous game with the flu. Going in uneducated, you run the risk of symptoms like cough, <coughs> migraine, and fatigue. Don't be like this guy. Combat the flu with cough drops, ibuprofen, and a good night's sleep. Be smart. Don't catch the flu. Good evening. My name is Amanda Hasbell, and I'm joining you here today in the Union Parking Garage. Today we're going to be going over how to drive safely in the parking garage. Let's go see. Oh my god! Oh my god! This girl just got hit by a car. Let's go see what happened. Ma'am, ma'am, are you okay? Are you okay? Ugh. Did you see that lady hit me with a car? Yeah, we did. I got it all on video. Oh my god. Let's go over here and talk about how we can prevent that. Yeah, not the hospital. Well, right now we're going to ask you a couple questions on how we can drive safely in the parking lot. What are ways that we can be aware of our surroundings? Oh, we can look both ways. Jenna, also, how about putting the distractions away? Yes, just like our phones, turning our music down, and also not focusing on our passengers. Where can you get information on how to get a parking pass? Transportation.unt.edu if you park in a garage, make sure you pay on the app or look for further instructions on how you should pay. And remember, no pass, no park. Let's all try to keep our mean green community safe. Remember, we're all in this together. Drive safe. Welcome back to Mean Green Game Day. I'm your host, Jake Levine. I'm joined by Mackenzie Freeman, Jasmine Grace, Sean Smith. Same crew. <laughs> the same crew. We are all still here. So we're going to recap uh, these two games 
One's actually going on right now. It's uh, LSU and Utah. Guys, who thinks going to win this game? It's tied 16-16 the first quarter. Who's, who thinks going to win this, Mac? You know, this is a tricky game, but I've been hyping up uh, Kim Mulkey the entire season. So I'm going to go with LSU. I love Angel Reese and what she's doing for the women's program there. So I'm going to go with LSU. I'm also going to go with LSU. I think Angel Reese is going to have a big game. Uh, I think she's going to need to have a big game because – there are yeah. some even bigger games coming up if they're able to pull oh, yeah. this one out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, obviously, if they get to the finals and face, you know, that South Carolina team, like, she's got to yeah. be ready. So she has, uh, I think, three points, three rebounds right now. Uh, looking for her to have a big game and uh, dominate. So. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to say the same. You know, I'm still confused to how they're a three seed with only two losses on the season. Yeah. Right. But, um, yeah, Angel Reese, um, when it comes to March, you best player, best player wins, typically. Yeah. Um, and she's the best player in that game. Right. Absolutely. And uh, we just saw a game finish. It was Miami defeating Villanova. Believe it or not, Great Miami game. is Believe still it. dancing. <laughs> Believe in it. The Elite Eight. And on TikTok. We love to see it in the women's bracket. You know, I feel like we don't see upsets as often like this. Mm-hmm. You know, real Cinderella teams. Miami, do you guys think they can keep this going? Sean? We'll find out on TikTok what they think about it. Uh, they can ah, keep it going. I it's coming. <laughs> Cabinet uh, twins. Smell that one yeah, for a the, while. Uh, <laughs> Giving up a 20-point lead is a suspect, but um, luckily they were able to stick it out. And, uh, yeah, it's still an emotional win. They can carry some momentum from that, and Mm -hmm. hopefully we'll see them further down the line. I definitely think they have a chance. You know, obviously a little bit biased because, again, been going with Miami for a while now. Been riding Miami. Um, Been going with them. So I feel like they can go as far as they take themselves. One thing I noticed about them is they're a very collective team. Like, when they play, it's very much team effort. You know, obviously Villanova – um, you know, their star players are on 31 and 13. I mean, you're going to get right. that from her most of the time. So I think that Miami plays really collective. You never know who's going to pop off. And I feel like they're going to be able to win if they can just continue that and continue to stay grounded. Yeah, I think you look at Miami's roster and kind of what Jasmine was saying. Um, they're playing as a team, and they have girls who will stand out. Roberts today, she had 21 points. Mm-hmm. Um, Lola Pendande, she had 19 points in the last game. So Miami, they're a tough team to compete up against. Yeah, absolutely. And so upcoming game we've got is Iowa and Colorado. Um, Guys, this Iowa team averages 87.5 points a game. Yeah. 40 of those thanks to Caitlin Clark. I was about to say. (laughs) So the question is, and Iowa has scored over 58 points in every game, Mm -hmm. and Colorado averages 58 points allowed per game. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) Interesting. So... Do you guys think wills. that Colorado has a chance at containing Caitlin Clark? Ooh, this no. one's tough. I'm going to go with no. <laughs> I've seen... <laughs> Sorry. I no, I mean, Caitlin Clark, she's gone up against better competition than Colorado. Mm. Uh, not to discredit Colorado. Obviously, they're a good team. But I really do think Iowa has this in their bag. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like I haven't seen Caitlin Clark fold yet. I feel like I haven't seen her yeah. back down any opponents for anyone to really find something that really stops her from getting almost a triple-double every game. Right. Uh, I feel like she's figured it out. I, I love the way she um, sees the game. She sees the game from just, like, such a higher level, kind of like, you know, you know, players like LeBron or Luka. Like, you just feel like they're one step ahead of you right. the entire time. That's how it feels watching her. And I think Colorado would have to have their best game and Iowa would have to have their worst game yeah. right. for them to win. Yeah. Well, I mean, something's got to give, um, and I don't think that's going to be the best shooter in the nation. Um, right. I think she's going to keep doing what she's been doing. Um, you talk about 58 points per game. A lot of that is related to pace of play, more so than defense. Um, right. Obviously, it's a great mark and something they should be proud of. But, uh, yeah, Caitlin Clark is, uh, I, think, I think she'll have a good game still. Yeah, she's hard. Yeah, absolutely. And so the last game tonight is Ole Miss and Louisville. Ole Miss is an eight seed, still dancing. Mm-hmm. Louisville, five seed. I mean, we're going to see either an eight or five in the Elite Eight. Pretty special. Um, this Haley Van Liff from uh, Louisville. Yeah. Guys, she's a baller. Yeah. Um, Ole Miss uh, shoots 41% while only allowing 35%. Who you guys think is going to win this game, Sean? Um, yeah, Louisville. Uh, Haley Van Lith. She's, uh, she's a menace. Yeah. Um, you know. <laughs> Especially that uh, game against Texas. Yeah. 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 I don't know if you saw in the, got in the handshake line. It was a little tricky. Yeah. Um, <laughs> mentioned something yeah. to her about being uh, honorable mention All-American as if that's some – yeah. Slight, they like, lost by 20. A, yeah, yeah. I was like, you just got knocked um, she, out of March Madness. She's, she's still playing. playing. Yeah, she's she's still completely playing. unfazed by it. She's yeah. got that, that mentality. Like, yeah. um, she's, she doesn't care about that, and she's going to go right. keep whoop up on the next team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think with that dominant win that they had against Texas, I think that just really shows that they're ready for the challenge. I definitely think uh, Ole Miss will give them a challenge. I love the way they've been playing. I think it'll be a way closer game, but I still have Louisville. Mm -hmm. Ole Miss knocked off a number one seed. Um, Louisville knocked off five seed Texas. So this one's actually a tricky one to pick for me, mm -hmm. but I'm actually going to go with the Cinderella here. I'm going to go with Ole Miss. Go I really it. think I like they that. can get in their bag and pull out another win. Why not? I like that. Uh, next one is Notre Dame and Maryland. This is a three seed versus two seed. This is going to be a great game, guys. Yeah. Uh, Notre Dame uh, allows 10 points per game less than Maryland. Maryland's the best free throw shooting team in the Big Ten, eighth best in the country. Uh, you guys think Notre Dame can uh, contain this offense? I think they can. Um, the last time these two teams faced off, it resulted in a two-point game. Mm -hmm. um, and then the history behind Notre Dame and then being in March Madness – I'm going to go with Notre Dame this game. Mm -hmm. I just think there's a lot more riding on them than there is Maryland. Mm -hmm. I think, like you said, their free throw percentage is just so high that they're, Notre Dame is going to have to keep them off the, uh, off the free throw line if they're going to try and win this game. Once they get there, they knock them down. It really gives them an advantage. When you have a two-point game or something like that, that's what it might come down to. So I'm going to pick, um, I'm going to pick Maryland, and I think they'll win. I'm also going to go with Maryland. Um, my, my grandpa is actually a huge Notre Dame women's basketball fan, so grandpa, if you're watching this, I'm so sorry. Um, I think their backcourt, um, I think they're too young. Um, you know, they're led by freshmen, sophomores. Um, and when you get this deep in March, it's, it's that veteran leadership that really, uh, that really carries you to the finish line. Yeah, absolutely. Next one, four seed UCLA, one seed South Carolina Gamecocks. They are 34 and 0. Charisma Osborne put up 36 points against Oklahoma in second round game for UCLA. For UCLA. <laughs> so, you guys think UCLA has any chance nope. in the world? I'm, I'm here. Nope, no. Well, oh. I'm gonna keep it short. It's a no for me. It's a no. It's a no for me. Simon Cowell. Yeah. Any chance? No, no. For real? It's a no for me. Yeah, I don't think so. I think we're gonna see South Carolina. Not a direct nope. I think they're gonna <laughs> on the nope train. Uh, so, 4 0 for South Carolina there. And then Ohio State UConn, this is going to be a pretty good game. Yeah. Ohio State, I don't know about them. They only beat UNC 71 to 69, 27 yeah. 7 record as yeah. a three seed. UConn dominated Baylor 31 and 5 overall. Does Ohio State have any chance here? Historically, uh, no. Yeah. Ohio State is 6 0 when they've met up with UConn. So, I'm going to go with UConn on this one. Um, oh. But I also have to give credit to Taylor Mikesell. She's averaging 40% on three-pointers. So if she can pop off this game, it'll be interesting to see that matchup. Yeah, Jess? I'm going to go with UConn. Yeah, um, that's, that's how we've seen, uh, seen the women's game go in the past few years. Um, I see Stanford get knocked off. But, uh, yeah, UConn is the better team. I think they're going to win. Last but not least, is anyone winning this tournament other than the South Carolina Gamecocks? I want to see LSU Woo! versus South Carolina again. I think that be that'll fun. be a phenomenal game. you think LSU game. can win that? I think so. Um, they faced them before. It didn't go in their favor, but I'm going to go with yes. LSU can win. South Carolina, others? If it's going to be anyone, it's going to be LSU, but I'm not sure anyone can beat them this year. It's just one of those years. Yeah, what about Miami? Not the Hurricanes. <laughs> Look, guys. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, that will do it for us today. Thank you so much for tuning in to Mean Green Game Day. Make sure to follow us on our socials at nttv underscore sports. And we will see you next Friday.